All right, so thanks everyone for joining. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Josh Ross. I'm one of the senior technical consultants slash service delivery managers here at Glidefast. Um, been working on ServiceNow for about years or so, doing various different things on the platform of you know development architecture. Um, worked with a few different ServiceNow customers uh, before moving into the consulting space with Glidefast. So today we're um, we're going to talk a little bit about the ServiceNow mobile agent app and kind of my experience building it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about their use case for the mobile app as well. Um, we'll talk about some of the out of the box functionality, you know, what it can do um, and how you can configure and build it. So we're also going to get into kind of the technical pieces of this as well. Um, so you can kind of get an idea for what's possible and how you can use it, um, you know, with your customers. Um, so this presentation is on the Madrid release. So um, this is, you know, the mobile agent app is new to Madrid and there is a lot of new stuff coming out in New York as well. So ServiceNow is doing a huge push uh, for mobile right now. This is like um, a big thing they've been getting into. They bought out a company who did mobile design solutions um, a few years ago and they've really been integrating it with their product. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of just a little bit of background. So that being said, I just have a few slides here. I'm not going to bore you with this. So just a quick overview of the agenda. What is the ServiceNow mobile agent app um, overview? Then I'll go into a demo of actually showing you what I did, um, showing you how it works on my phone. I have my phone connected to my computer here. So I'll actually show you what I built um, and how I built it and everything. And then if everyone is, uh, we'll save some time just for, for questions as well at the end. So what is ServiceNow Agent? So first and foremost, um, it's an application that is available on your mobile phone for um, Apple, iOS, and Android. You can get it in the iTunes store or the Google Play store. Um, you can do things like updating records, you know, according with coworkers, location-based stuff. Um, one of the biggest things that I think is really cool, and especially for the use case that I'm gonna talk about in the app is offline mode. So what you can actually do is download all of the data uh, available on your app locally to your cache on your phone. And you can actually do things on the app when you have no service. And then when you reconnect and have service again, it uploads it to the cloud. So that's like a huge perk, especially for things like field service management um, and PPM, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about of a PPM app I built. Uh, but this like kind of change, this changes a lot how uh, people are able to do their work, especially with, you know, those applications like field service management. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, you know, the use case is not only for end users, you can really build mobile experiences now for not only end users, you can build it for um, ITIL workers as well, or people who are actually, you know, doing the work, right? So field service agents, project managers, whatever your um, persona is you can really fulfill their use case by being able to build these um, these applications. First and foremost, what comes out of the box with this? So there's two applications which ServiceNow has in Madrid out of the box. So the first is Field Service Mobile. Um, so this is kind of taking the whole Field Service Management app and actually they they built a mobile solution for it. Um, so this is a pre-built thing and you can do thing or field service agents and dispatchers. You can do work orders. You can manage assets. Um, you can track locations of where agents are in the field. Um, and they can actually, you know, record travel and time worked all from their phone. Um, and this is the solution I did is very similar to field service mobile, but it's more catered toward a custom PPM solution, which I'll talk about. The other thing that you get out of the box is, is ITSM. Um, so you get, you know, you can assign incidents to your group. You can add comments, um, work notes. You can upload pictures, files, you know, any attachments you want. Uh, you can upload photos and you can do all of that um, from your phone and that will show up in the activity log. Um, you can pretty much do a lot of things. You can do approvals, obviously. And the big thing about this is just the user experience um, on mobile. It's much better in this app and it gives you way more power to, as a developer, to actually configure the app the way that you want. 
Um, it's a lot of drag and drop. It's a lot of configuration. It's not a lot of coding, um, which is really nice. I did a little bit of coding for this, but it was, I would say about 80% of this was done all through configuration. I didn't actually, I probably only wrote uh, 20 lines of code for the whole mobile app that I did. Um, so I, guess I did that. And so let's talk a little bit about the main components of the app, right? So this is kind of the, the language when we're talking about um, the different technical pieces of what the app is made up of. So you can really think of the highest level of this as um, folders and applets, right? So folders are really more individual applications um, and applets are more of the folders that are actually in that application. So that's kind of the breakdown of the highest level of, you know, when you're building an app, right? So if I, and I'll, I'll show you this and I'll make more sense during my demo, but if you have a PPM application and you have, you know, the modules work in progress, um, all my tasks, those are what are called applets in the mobile app. So that's kind of the way that you think about um, the language of this. One step down from that is the actual data that's involved in each applet, and those are known as data items. So um, this is where you actually determine which table you want to present to the user as part of the mobile app. Um, so if you want to select the project task table or the incident table, you configure all of that in a data item. And what you actually do is you then tie together data items and applets. So applets are kind of the folder and the data item is the data that's actually displayed inside of the applet. And then one level below that, there's the details tab. And this is kind of where you see, um, you know, all of the information about the record that you clicked on. This is basically just like the form view. So what can you configure? What can you do with the application? Um, before in the mobile solution, you couldn't really do that much. You didn't really have a lot of flexibility to design it the way you want. Um, but with the new mobile solution, you have a ton of ability to be able to configure and customize it the way you want. So applications, folders, icons, um, data items, you can configure different screen layouts. So this is a big thing, depending on what you want to show on the list view, it gives you like 15 of these pre-built different layouts that you can use to display on the list view. Um, you can configure what shows on the header and the form as well as the fields. You can do list swipe functions. So if you're going through a list and you want to swipe to the uh, right or left, um, you can actually take certain actions. So for those of you who are familiar with Tinder or other applications like that, um, you know, you have the ability to do those, uh, right or left swipe functions and then have certain database actions occur. Um, you can do action buttons. So in the top right, if you see these like three ellipses here, um, you can add buttons and then have certain database actions occur based on that. Um, you can do related lists, offline mode properties. So you can determine which things you can and can't do offline on the phone. Um, you can do UI policy. So hiding and showing fields. And you can do push notifications through JSON as well. Um, so if you want to, you know, push notifications to the mobile app, you can do push notifications um, through a few different things. And we'll kind of talk about how you can set up push notifications um, through the, the mobile app. Um, along the bottom here, so you can have your details, the activity stream, um, the related lists, and we'll talk about the different tabs on the bottom of it. Um, and we'll kind of go through that. So as part of push messages and what these are is, you know, when you get an alert, if it's the same thing, if you have Facebook on your phone and someone posts on your wall, it sends a push notification to your phone. Same concept with ServiceNow. Um, so the kind of the three different pieces of this are the push, the push message content. So this is where you're actually defining the content record um, of what's, what the user is going to see. Um, the push message is where you actually are defining, um, you know, the, the message content, right. That you created in the previous step. And then you actually have to configure when it sends as well. So similar to how, you know, how an email notification works, um, you're basically creating the notification record of when the, when a task gets assigned to me, I actually want this to notify me within the app as well. So offline mode is another piece um, from within here. 
that has a ton of really cool functionality. So if you go off, let's say you get to a customer site, you no longer have service and you still want to be able to access your app. Um, if you come into the settings tab of the phone here, you'll see that there is a line item called offline. And what you can actually do is you can activate offline mode and it's going to actually download all of the data that's available to you on your phone um, to, to the local cache of your phone here. Um, so it's gonna do things like it'll download all the attachments, all the records that you have access to, um, pretty much anything that's on there at the current time, you'll be able to access. And the way that you actually do this is you need to enable the offline support plugin uh, through the high portal. So you'll need to go in and actually request this be activated um, all from within there. So once it downloads, um, you can take all kinds of different database actions on your phone. Um, you can set tasks to work in progress, you know, so on and so forth. And then as, as soon as you reconnect, it's going to re-upload it and update the records. Um, so I think it gives you like a 48 hour window or so. Once it downloads to your cache, you need to reconnect to the internet um, or you need to get service again within that 48 hour window to re-upload it to the cloud. So all those records will get updated. Um, and there's, I'm an administrator in this instance. So the download is going to take a little while because I have, you know, hundreds of records available to me. Um, but this is where you could go ahead and actually do that. Um, so that is kind of, you know, a quick overview of the mobile app. Mm -hmm.